Hello, my name's David Kemp. I'm the Environment Agency's Flood Resilience Team Leader for Essex, Norfolk and Suffolk, and I'm going to explain the complex drainage pattern on Canvey Island. Canvey Island is indeed an island. It's in South Essex in the Thames Estuary, and it's for most of its history, it's been a marsh. Now, this marsh began drainage in the 17th century and has continued for the 400 years since. So it leaves us in a situation today where we have 15 and a half uh, square kilometres of island protected by a huge seawall there to, per to protect against a repeat of the 1953 uh, sea flooding tragedy and within that there are 17,000, over 17,000 homes. Those homes uh, are on a very flat land which as I've said is, is, is drained marsh and that means that drainage is very difficult. Water likes to run downhill and there's no hills on, on, on Canvey and that presents us with uh, quite a significant challenge. How does that happen? How does surface water on Canvey move? Well, let's take it, if you fall in the middle of the island, the first thing rainfall has to do is find its ways into a complex network of highways, drainage, um, ordinary water courses, surface water sewers, and eventually all those find their way through to Environment Agency um, main rivers. These main rivers, uh, I don't want you to get carried away with something that looks like the wide Missouri. What you've really got are 5,250 5, metres of concrete drainage channels, small concrete drainage channels and pipes, which move crisscross the island and go around the outside. Their job is to take that water which is uh, has come from the surface across the island under the force of gravity to the outside where eight pumping stations surround it. These pumping stations starting in the north are Hilton, Nightwick, Croppenberg, Lee Beck in the east, then St Anne's, May Avenue, Scar House all in the south and then in the east Dutch Village. Think of these pumping stations as elevators. They lift the water from the drainage channel up in considerable up to six metres over and through the seawall and out into the Thames estuary where it can do no damage. The pumping stations are automatic, they cut in and out so that when the water level rises the pumps come in, when the water level falls the pumps cut out to ensure that they don't run dry and cause a problem um, of damage to the pumps. So that's what the pumps are doing. In the middle of the island we have five other what we know as low flow pumping stations and these five pumping stations are there to stop the water stagnating in dry weather because it's so flat so they move it from level to level separated by weirs. What else happens there? Well because of the low topography on the island we're able to use that to our advantage. This means that most of the drainage channels on uh, Canvey can in fact flow both ways so that the pumping stations are joined up. We can move uh, water from the north of the island to the south of the island via North Dyke and South Dyke and we can move it between pumping stations by means of Lee Beck Dyke. So this means that we can, when a pumping station is perhaps overwhelmed by water or should it shut down or have a malfunction, the, wa the, the water builds up in the dike and moves along to the next one and the, bikes, the, 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 the pumping stations interconnect and serve each other. So that's the situation we have round. It's all, so, all supported by these very small drainage ditches known as Main River and very prone to blockage. So one of our major problems on the island is the blockage of the things either by things being thrown into them or by things being washed into them. And that's, that's one of the many challenges that we face with the drainage on Canvey Island.